welcome to the Kiwi Mana Valley. Okay, hi everyone, this is Gary here from Kiwi Mana, and today we've got uh, Lucas Blair from Pennsylvania. Is that right, Lucas? Yep, that's okay. right. How are you going today? Oh, doing well, doing well. Oh, that's great. And um, Lucas and his team of, of, um, are creating an electronic book called The Lost Bee, and it's a book to uh, teach children how to um, about pollination and the importance of bees. So would you like to tell us a bit more about that, Lucas? Uh, yeah, sure. So the uh, the book is actually a um, it's a I, I guess they would call it. It's not just an ebook. It's a, like an ebook app. So it's the kind of thing that would be on a. Should I do a test screen share real quick? On a tablet and and so like think iPad, Android tablets, that kind of thing. And it, it'll play like a traditional book. So you'll be able to you know go through the story and that kind of thing. But um, one of the things my company also does is we make educational games and simulations. So we wanted to include on some of the pages of the story. Um, at, you know, actual games that kids can go in and they can play a game as a bee, and then so do worker bee jobs, that kind of thing. Um, and the uh, the the story for the book is kind of cool. It's um we took some liberties, so we have su we're working with subject matter experts from uh, the Xerxes Society and the Center for Pollinator Research at Penn State, so they're keeping us uh, making sure our stuff is uh, as scientifically accurate as possible. But we I I did take some liberties with the story, so we can make a cool children's book. So um. It's a uh, the story is about a bumblebee that gets uh, accidentally raised by honeybees. So then to stay in the hive, um, the bumblebee has to learn to be a honeybee to stay busy. So that's where the uh, the games in the story kind of come in. Oh, okay, sounds good. Yeah, I have actually seen bumblebees in the hive. So. Oh really? Okay, yeah. yeah. That, that's yeah. what. Uh, <laughs> when we got feedback from them when I told them the the story idea originally. Um, they said no, that won't work. The honeybees would have eaten the bumblebee, and I told them like that would be like the shortest and saddest children's book story uh, ever if they just found like page two they're like and then they and then they ate him so it would be kind of depressing so <laughs> they, they, let, they let me take some liberties so we could make it a better story yeah well like after stinging the bee after stinging the bumblebee thrown out of the hive it wouldn't go down too well would it yeah we'd have a lot of crying kids so <laughs> Well, I mean, if, if you have you seen the Jerry Seinfeld movie, the Beast B movie? Yes, I have. I've seen that, and I've yeah. seen um. There was another popular one that I think was about ants or something like that. Maybe that was one of them was like called A Bug's Life or something like that. But yeah, they were oh, pretty, right. yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know if I think our story follows like the typical story arc. I don't know. I don't think I invented a new kind of story, but it's the first one that I'd seen where it was you know, bees and bumblebees. And really the thing for us is it's, we want it to be educational. We want to make kids aware about, you know, how, how you know, honeybee biology works. And then, you know, there's some environmental issues addressed in there too. So things like uh, monoculture farming and, and the use of pesticides and how that affects bees. At one point in the story, the bees have to pack up and kind of move because everybody's getting sick because there were pesticides sprayed by the hive. So, so things like that that were you know, talking about some bigger environmental issues, along with having some, you know, hopefully some some fun games to play and educational games. So, oh, that's fantastic. So, so what? Why did you choose to aim it at children? Is it is that because it's sort of where your company's aimed at, or um, or just is it was it was it an intentional thing? Well, we we make. I mean, we make games for almost everybody. So I've made games for everybody from kindergartners or pre-k all the way up through you know marines the army or we've made them for people that are adult learners so you know pretty much all uh all ages but i think the, the reason we chose uh, you know a children something that would something for children and then specifically a a children's book and a children's ebook is i you know if you can if you can teach a kid something or teach a child something or, or change their opinion about something or, or you know make them think about something a different way then you can have an impact on something for you know their their lifetime. So, you not not it's not to say that I don't want to change adults' opinions too or, or teach them things. But but I, I like that. And then I think, and and I say this in the in our in our Kickstarter video too. I I, I think we chill, we like the idea of a children's ebook because. Uh, for the age group that we're going for, they probably can't read by themselves for the story anyway. So it's more like a bedtime story. So yeah. then the cool thing is, is, is parents will be reading the story with their kids. So then you know parents are going to be parents are going to be learning about this. The kids are going to be learning about it. They can you know maybe play the games together. So and 
and we're going to make it so the the uh, the games in the story are are for younger kids, difficulty wise. But then we're going to have an arcade mode built into it, um, and the games will actually scale in difficulty, so anybody can play them. Anybody that's interested in anybody that's interested in bee biology or anything like that, um, they'll they'll be able to play the games and have fun. So, oh, fantastic! And and so, what what platforms does this game or ebook run on? Is it a PC based one, or is it a PlayStation or? Uh, no, a ta tablet based uh, primarily will be the ebook. So think uh, your iPads, your Android based devices, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Kindles, Nooks, that kind of thing. Um, there's a giant cat here behind me. My my apologies for that. Yeah, I can see uh, that. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. she she she's a beast. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So primarily that. Although for the Kickstarter, we are going to have um some special editions that people can get. So you know, the normal book is going to be an ebook. It's going to be the full story. It's going to be uh, narrated. So audio narrated. So you can hit a button. It'll read the story to you by a professional voice actress. Um, six games. But then we're going to have some special editions like soft cover and hard cover. Um, versions of the book that you know are just—it's only going to be for people that donate to the Kickstarter. So they'll they'll get that, and they'll get the ebook and and a, and a PDF that they can just you know read on a PC or anything and share. So yeah, oh that sounds cool. And um, okay, and do, do you want to just show the audience a bit of a few screenshots of it then? Yeah, sure. So, so I'll yeah. show everybody uh, two screenshots of um, some. I'll do a little screen share here. Um, so the 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 first scene here, and and um, uh, this is the essentially the first the first scene in the book, and, and these are just uh, concept images that we're using for now. But these are all going to be hand painted, and then the 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 game art is going to be uh, painted in a similar similar style but digitally, so this is the uh, the first scene in the book and and what's happening here is two uh, two honeybees who have a hive in the in the tree up there uh, they they find a larvae on the ground and they think that it's they think that it's one of their larvae so they're gonna as, as the story goes they're gonna take it up into the hive and then what really happened is, is if you look here we wanted to try to represent some biology here there, there's an underground hive which is the honeybee hive. So then it's actually a larvae from uh, from there, and then um, yeah, and then then so eventually they take the the bee into the uh, into the hive, and then so this is another scene from from inside the book, and this is um, this has kind of the in the ebook we're gonna have kind of a digital overlay, so some added scenes on top of the painting. So this is the uh, the bumblebee talking to her honeybee trainer. Um, the bumblebee's name is Bumble. We got pretty creative with it, and um, the uh, <laughs> the the honeybee's name is Beatrice. And that's that's uh they're they're both female characters and um the Beatrice is is in charge of training Bumble to be a a hun a honeybee because that was they they take they take Bumble to the queen and the queen says you can stay but you have to you have to you have to stay busy if you're going to be in the colony so um and and yeah. then how the how the how the book will work as kids are reading through the book um if you see in the lower right hand corner here there's a little bumblebee icon if you touch the bumblebee icon at any point because Beatrice during a couple times during the book will say, you know, in this case they're in the they're in the nursery and she she's explaining what you, what they what worker bees do when they're in the nursery. So feed the larvae, clean cells, and the queen inspects their work. And she says, would you like to try? And if the answer is yes, then you hit the little icon and then a game will load. And then in this case, this is the game uh, the game for the nursery actually. Um, you know, so what will happen is is the the bee will be flying from left to right, and the, you know, so the hives will be the the hive cells will be moving from right to left. And then there'll be little hungry larvae. There'll be you know little cells that are dirty. And then wherever the player um, is touching, there'll be a bumblebee on their finger essentially. And then so they can go around. They can feed the larvae and feed you know just a simple game for little kids. And then the thing will speed up as you go. And then um, another cool game that we have planned for for later on is um, there there are six different games in in the in the game. And this is all just a concept art, but um, foraging. So. It's going to be like a top-down flyer. So the uh, the bumble, you know, bumble is flying through a a field full of flowers, um, you know, collecting nectar, collecting pollen, that kind of stuff. Hopefully, avoiding some other uh, some other pollinators because if you bump into them, then it'll uh, lower your static charge. So I guess uh, you know they they build up a static charge as as they're flying that helps them gather gather pollen and stuff like that. So they'll bump it, try to avoid bumping into pollinators, that kind of stuff. So, but each one of the um, each one of the games, we're trying to make them as you know, as as accurate as they possibly can be, but still be fun. 
So, you know, because hopefully, you know, because when kids read a storybook, they want to read it over and over and over again. So maybe they'll be playing these games over and over again. And then they'll have, a, they'll have an understanding, hopefully, of, you know, all the things that worker bees do. So all the, all the different jobs they do. So that's kind of the uh, kind mm-hmm. of the idea. Yeah, fantastic. So all the different roles of the um in the hive, you mean? Something yep, like, yep. Yeah. All, all the great. different roles. So we have yeah, we have uh you know things like uh, you just saw there uh, feeding the feeding the uh, the larvae, cleaning different cells in the hive, um, foraging. Um, we have one where they uh, gather water and then uh, drop it on spots and beat their wings to to cool the hive. We have feeding the queen. Um, uh, putting propolis on stuff. So you, you guys probably know this, but propolis is like the the plant resin they 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 put on stuff. It has like antifungal, antibacterial properties, and then it'll seal uh, cracks and stuff. Kind of you know, so just just cool little stuff like that. And it's it, they're you know we like you saw in the the nursery game, bees probably don't necessarily fly around a nursery to do that, but the 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 entomologist let us take some liberty so we can make a cool game, but also you know try to have good learning objectives and good things for for kids to learn, so. Oh, I think I think it's a great idea. I, th- I think it's um, will help kids learn, eh? Like just like the you know the B movie with Jerry Seinfeld, it sort of brought awareness of the issues of pollination in the world. So. Yeah, and and what we're going to try to do also is you know once we've kind of piqued their interest, hopefully, so you know kids and parents read this thing. Um, you know, at the end of it, they they want to they want to help. They want to do more because you know the the really the story and the games and and all the educational material they're meant to 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 get somebody interested in it and, and to make them know a little bit more about it and make them maybe aware of some issues. And then we want to also include uh, one of our stretch goals in the Kickstarter is to have things like a a pollinator garden planner. So just you know, when they're done with the thing, we can say you know if you want to help bees and other pollinators then, you know, get outside, plant a garden, we'll help you do it. And then they can, you know, drag and drop some plants, you know, plant a garden as a family maybe right there on their tablet after they've played the game, and then we'll tell them, you know, where to go buy the plants, that kind of stuff. So, and we, if we can, I'd like to include as many educational things as, you know, just links to other sites, places they can donate. I mean, I think it could be if you're going to have a whole family gather around a book, reading a story and playing games and getting them interested in a topic, then at the end of the thing, I want them to have as many resources as possible to go out and to, to help honeybees, to help bumblebees, to help, you know, every pollinator. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and maybe even keep bees themselves, maybe. Absolutely. Yep. And I, I, I it's, I'm amazed. I, I didn't really know how many, until I started, you know, we started doing this project about six months ago and I didn't, I, you know, I talked to a lot of friends that I didn't necessarily knew what know what their hobbies were, and I'm like, oh, working on a yeah. project about bees, and they're like, yeah, I, I keep bees. I'm like, how do you, I didn't like I, I I know a lot of people, and it it shocked me that that keep bees. It it was crazy to me how many people just because I you know I've been working with people that have you know the they're they're entomologists, so they have like you know many 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 hives, but a lot of people just have a have a hive in there, or or I was just. Uh, Today, my, my wife and I went for a walk to take pictures at a, at a pollinator garden, and they had um, little bee houses set up, and there were different pieces of bamboo, and there were bees in each one of them, and there were uh, holes drilled in other pieces of wood, and there were bees in all of those, and there were – it was just it, – it's crazy to me how – you know, and I, I think it's an awesome thing, but I was just completely unaware of it until um, – so there are a lot of people doing doing good stuff and doing things to help out. Yeah, that's great. And can we – um. For people that don't know what Kickstarter is, um, could you just explain the process to people? Uh, yeah, sure. So, so Kickstarter is a it's a platform. It's it's a website you know, more than anything else. But you go to the website and it's a platform to to crowdfund projects. So, um, you know, people like me that have have a good idea and and wanna wanna make it, but maybe don't have the funding to actually to actually get the thing made. Now, in our case. Um, you know, we've 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 done you know quite a bit of we're gonna we're gonna do the art and the design and all of that stuff, but then um, to have somebody actually program you know all of the games and then um, you know to do to do some other editing and things like that, it's a way to say, hey, we want this thing to happen. If you like this idea, then help us crowdfund it, and people essentially you know pledge an amount, and then for that amount, we send them something as a reward essentially. So in our case. Um, we have rewards all the way from four dollars up to I think the highest one is like uh, like like two thousand dollars or something like that. 
Um, but like, so for four dollars, you get a PDF of the book. For eight dollars, you get, um, you know, a copy of the ebook. And then, like I said, for for other things, you get a, a special edition, like soft covers and hardcover versions of the book. Um, prints, some of the art prints that we're gonna have, like the final, you know, paintings and stuff like that, or actually original artwork. And we'll mail mail it anywhere. So if somebody falls in love with one of the scenes from the book, they can, you know, they can have the art, and uh, we'll. Uh, the artist and everybody will sign it and stuff like that. So, and it, you know, and it all goes to, you know, hopefully something that everybody that, you know, certainly the people that listen to your podcast, but, but something that's a uh, good because it's educational, but then it, you know, good because it's, you know, for, uh, you know, so, something that's going to help pollinators, help bees. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, what was I going to say, and the people have to, have to pledge their money before the 13th. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So Kickstarter is kind of a it's a it's a weird it's a weird setup. So we don't it's an all or nothing kind of setup. So uh, for our thing, we need we need thirty two thousand dollars. That is that's what we'll cover. Now you know some of that money is gonna you know some of the money is taken off of the top because of the Kickstarter expenses and stuff like that. Like they there's a a percentage of that that you know it's it's like the the Kickstarter tax basically. And then you know but. And then some of it's going to go to creating the rewards and that kind of stuff. But but so the the rest of it, the the, the money that's left over, um, you know, we're going to use that. And if it's it's all or nothing, so we either get thirty two thousand dollars or we get zero dollars. So it's either it happens or it doesn't. Now you can go over thirty two thousand dollars, and that's what we've built in stretch goals. We have some additional games, um, like a bee dance game, which will be super cool, where you know bees use a a dance kind of thing to communicate with other bees about when the direction of where things are. So we have a game for that, and then we have a game for uh, defending the hive, which is going to be really cool too. Um, there'll be other you know things trying to get in the hive, and you have to defend them with the other workers. Um, but yeah, so it's all or nothing, and then uh, it's by a certain date. So in our case, it was 30 days, and our 30 days is up uh, September 13th. So uh, September 13th, at, like, and that's uh, Eastern Standard Time for anybody that's trying to, uh, that's in New Zealand or some other place that's gonna is a is a last minute bidder. Remember that we're on a, on a Eastern Standard Time. But uh, but yeah, so it's it's all or nothing, and it's uh, September 13th. So either we get the money or we don't by that date. I think your uh, your audio might have cut out. Sorry. Oh, there sorry, you go. I was, I was <laughs> muted there. Sorry. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. No, I, I was, I was just done. saying that. Yeah. No, people probably need to um put their bid in quite earlier than the thirteenth. I would suggest. Uh yeah, I, the sooner the better. It's funny how these things work, and I didn't. I, I I was. This is my first Kickstarter. Um, as much work as it's been, it might be my last. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so these things kind of work on. Uh, it's almost like a herd mentality kind of thing. When people see other people voting. There's kind of like everybody's like, oh, we got to get in on this, we got to get in on this. But then if there's like a lull in voting, so yeah, I would say if if you're interested in the project and you want to support us, uh, vote uh, vote now, vote vote early, and and yeah, uh, and, and definitely connect with us on. I'll, I'll you know I'll definitely send you anybody that that pledges. I'll definitely um, you know send them a message. But but connect with us on uh, social media and stuff like that too. So if anybody uses uh, Twitter or Facebook or anything like that, we're trying to send out as many messages on that's a really good way to reach a lot of people so sharing those things uh, or sharing the, the project on those platforms is a, is a really good thing that would help us out a lot too so yeah and, and uh, we've actually made a short code everyone guys for this it's called uh, if you go to kiwimana.co.nz slash lost b that's lost b um, that'll give you the uh, a site that'll, that'll transfer to the Kickstarter um, pledge page and we'll also include that pledge page in the show notes for this at a later date. Um, we've just got some questions here, uh, Lucas, from some people. Uh, okay. First one's from Tyson. He's just saying, who who is doing the artwork for the project? Uh, my wife actually is doing the uh, so the 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 paintings and the game art. My my wife is a uh, she you know she painting and drawing is kind of her specialty, and then I've kind of wrangled her in. She does a lot of our game art, our video game art as well. So she uh, she does all of that. So okay, that sounds good. And um, Mat Matisse said, um, what what really interested my kids was if, if the bees sleep during winter, and if not, so and you know what what is going on in the hives. So maybe that's something to include in the story. Because there's a lot of I know there's a misconception that bees hibernate. Yeah, which is not true. Uh, and my understanding of it is that they all pretty much. I, I guess you would say that this story takes place 
in one summer basically because it's pretty much every yeah. everybody's everybody's gone at the end of the summer so like we don't we don't really include that and I guess to answer the other question a little bit more I said my wife and I didn't say her name if I don't give her credit for this my wife's name is Danielle so if you yeah if you go to our company's website you can see uh, Danielle on there too but uh but yeah so we I think that would be an interesting thing to 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 address either in the story or maybe in one of the games I think it was maybe a darker theme than we wanted to touch on in a in a children's book or like a pre-k thing where it's like you know hey falls here all the bees are going away but i think it's interesting and we would like to you know if if this project works out i think you know the your the the person that asked the question got me thinking about this we've talked about you know a- expanding into other stories so like since this is you know in this story it's bumble meeting bumble meeting honeybees and learning to be a honeybee I would love to yeah. do something where Bumble meets butterflies and learns to be a butterfly. Maybe maybe Bumble could be the pollinator ambassador. I don't know, but but I, th- I think there's a lot of it's the kind of thing that we I would I would really like to 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 expand the story at some point and you know have have new games and new stories and and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, and Matisse has said he's gonna he's gonna put a link to the Kickstarter account on his blog. So that's yeah. Thanks, Matisse, for doing that. That's awesome. Oh, thank you, Matisse. That's awesome. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, that's great. And um, so, how how are the how are you, how are you feeling with the how's it going so far with the Kickstarter account? Um, I I haven't checked it this evening yet, but I think we're we're at like maybe ten or twelve percent, so a little bit behind, I guess. Um, number wise, we're probably since we're about a, we're we're a week in as of today, so seven days, uh, like right around today. Yeah. So we're a little bit behind, but. I think these things, uh, Kickstarters in general, tend to have like a, a bubble in the beginning, and then kind of like a slow build up, and then there's like a mad dash at the end of pledges, where it's like, because people are like, oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, and then like two weeks from now, I'm going to go back, I don't be like, you know, everybody that said they were going to pledge, you know, and then they'll be like, oh yeah, that thing, so it's like, there's always like a last minute like surge and stuff, but but so yeah, I think we're at, we're at like maybe 12%, like 10 to 12% funded now, um, but we got to keep... Uh, keep getting it up there. We just added um, new rewards last night, um, four new rewards for people that are, uh, and it's for, um, for, for schools. So people can donate to any school that's in Pennsylvania. They can donate, uh, essentially, you know, pay for a certain amount and then we'll go to that school and we'll do, uh, read the story, play the games with them, do pollinator activities. And then for the older kids, we'll teach, you know, teach them game design and stuff like that. And that's going over well. And then, uh, like I said earlier, we've added a uh, voice narration. So it, that voice narration used to be a stretch goal. And um, we were, uh, we, 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 I think it was something we wanted to add just as, as a regular part of the book. So we're going to, it's going to, it, it will, it will, the, the book will read to you. So it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, well, guys, it's uh, I think this is a great, great project. So I hope everyone gets behind it, and um, you know, it gets the message out to the children, because because let's be honest, they're the future, and they're the future beekeepers, aren't they? So you know, get the more more kids into bees, the, the better, I say. Absolutely. Eventually, these guys, the well, I mean, eventually, the children of the day are going to be the ones ruling the country, aren't they, or the world? So. Get totally. Yeah, and if you can if you if you can get a bunch of kids interested in in pollinators and bees and then just science in general. Like I just like the idea of kids being interested in in bugs and nature and science at an early age. That that's awesome. I mean, you can yeah. you can completely you can completely change the, the the their career path or maybe the education they would try to get or all of that stuff just by, you know, inspiring someone really like that. So that's kind of the one of one of the goals of this kind of thing. So Yeah. Well, I think the big thing is, is is make them aware that they're not not to fear bees, you know, because a lot of a lot of kids are very scared yeah. of bees. Which yeah. Which is, um, you know. Un- unfortunate. So, yeah. 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 Pretty unfortunate. Yep. Yeah, and we talk about you know one of the, one of the things the other bees talk about in the book is they explain what pollination is. They explain why it's important. Um, and then that that's the that leads up to the foraging game where you go out and you actually do the you know the the nectar and pollen collection and stuff like that. So we we definitely try to touch on those things to you know say these are this is why bees are important and this is why we need to protect them and stuff. So yeah, for sure. And um, oh, Matisse has just asked. Um, I, I know the project just started, but would this expand to different languages? Um, we could definitely do. I, I think the answer is yes. I mean, the one good thing about a uh, 
doing an ebook app as opposed to something that's in print, that's as easy as just, you know, we can update it at any point, you know. So I, I think that's definitely something. My uh, my wife speaks uh, Portuguese. My wife Danielle speaks Portuguese and Spanish. So um, I only speak bad English. So you, for for me, you're you're stuck with that. But uh, so I think uh, things like Portuguese, Spanish, and then definitely you know it, whatever <laughs> whatever other languages are interested in it, we we will we will do our best to accommodate. So so yes, I th I think at some point it definitely will be. Um, for the for the text anyway, I don't know about the voice narration unless we have any volunteers to read it in uh, other languages. Oh no, that's great. Well, um, well, cheers, cheers, Luke, for coming along, and we'll get this uh, we'll get this out there pretty soon, so we can get some more uh, people to pledge for you. Okay, great. So guys, get out there, kiwimanacoz slash b donate some uh, donate some money, and um, yeah, thanks a lot, and just stay on the line there, Lucas, and I'll just end the transmission. So thanks everyone for listening, and we really appreciate you guys uh, listening and watching this uh, interview with Lucas. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.